Cara Dovecott, novelist and shape artist. Disabled, Cara tried the conventional career path. Well, I did all sorts of things. I worked in a call centre. Um, I worked um, cleaning equipment in a laboratory. I did all the minimum wage kind of stuff. Um, and finally got a proper job, um, which I thought was going to be my career. Um, I worked for 12 years in the civil service in a number of roles, but actually found it really difficult to get consistent disability support. Um, actually, in the end, after having been bullied, having taken my employees through grievance procedures, um, I ended up leaving the civil service, going back into education. Um, and, um, yeah, I think it's, it's been really hard for me to actually build a career. Dyslexic and autistic, she feels employers don't adjust for her. And it's just not fitting the box. It's your face doesn't fit round here. Um, do people feel a sense of connection with me? Do they see me fitting into their team? Will I fit into the way they do work? I think it's very difficult to actually sell yourself when right at the beginning of that process, when you're trying to impress people and stand out from the crowd, you're actually asking people to do what they do differently. And that's just a conversation that doesn't work. It's got two di contrasting agendas going on. You're trying to say, pick me, I'm wonderful, but I want to do things differently from the way you normally do it. And companies, are, of course, are going to go for the candidate who's going to look like they fit in around here. Cara tried to carry on at work, playing the neurotypical game. Thing you said that you try, tried to play the neurotypical game. Mm. Tell me what that means. Um, well, autism, um, I'm autistic as well as dyslexic. And autism and dyslexia are both forms of having your brain wired in a different way from the typical population. And that's incredibly stressful. Um, it actually was so stressful working in that kind of environment that I became physically ill not because I didn't like the work or I wasn't capable of doing the work, but the environment in which I was expected to work um, was like, a, um, was like a, a kind of endurance test. It would be like putting an ordinary person into a nightclub and expecting them to do accountancy work with sort of flashing lights and disco music going on all day. And nobody would think that was reasonable. Would she do better with better work skills? Cal, how do you keep your skills up to date? Um, I, um, I think that's a little bit of a, a cheeky question. Um, I think often when disabled people are, are asked about their readiness for the workplace and how they're going to make themselves appealing to employers, um, we're asking the wrong question. Um, I have made considerable efforts to keep my skills up to date and this isn't simply learning the latest version of Word. Um, I have gone down to working part-time so that I could fund myself to study for my master's degree. Um, I have invested in myself very heavily in terms of seeking psychotherapy, attempting to address some of my issues um, and I want to be given the opportunity to use those skills and I feel that the workplace isn't doing enough um, to see my potential and I would ask the question the other way around. What is the workplace doing so we can actually make use of the skills that I have? Unemployed, the job centre was little help. So I was being told, you know, get off our books, go and get this job. It was a job that wouldn't pay my bills. It was a job that didn't use my skills. I have a master's degree. I just thought this is ridiculous. And yet I know that there are so many people who are vulnerable to, um, because when you have a communication difficulty, it's difficult to stand up for yourself. So you, you get advice from this person who doesn't understand anything about your disability, and it would be very easy to be pressured into going into a job environment which was bound to fail. Cara changed career direction. She's a writer writing a novel. The novel is, as I said, set in an old people's home. Um, it's not any old people's home. It's an old people's home which is maximum security. And it's full of people who 
used to work for the Secret Service and didn't have the good fortune to be shot on the job. And the, the protagonist of the novel um, is a young woman who has, um, um, she's been ordained into the Anglican ministry and she's the first of the generation of women going into that profession where she's very much second class. And she's been sent off to be a chaplain in this old people's home, not knowing really what's going on there. She doesn't realize that there's a sort of political backstory, um, but she finds out what's really going on there. Her novel has religion, comedy, and a corpse named Jenkins. In the end, the Jenkins affair swallowed me up. Ever since the truth came out in the press, the affair has eclipsed every other aspect of myself. Whenever my name is mentioned, it's followed by the Jenkins affair. Cara Dovecott, oh yes, wasn't she the chaplain in the Jenkins affair? Matters couldn't be otherwise. Being present at the scene of a Secret Service murder is the type of mud that sticks. I can't count the number of times I've been asked what really happened. When I was chaplain at the Larches, I kept a diary. Yet it is my diary which preserved my thoughts as events unfolded. It kept me, and I can read it and remind myself how little I understood then of real politics. And what, have you finished the novel yet? Um, the first draft is finished, but it needs drastic rewriting. It's a bit of a muddle at the moment. I think I got lost in the plot and just have to sort of unravel it and make it a lot simpler. Shape champions creators like Cara. Tell me about Shape. How, why, why do you know Shape? Describe Shape to me, do you? Um, shape is um, a community of artists who have all different kinds of disabilities and are artists in every kind of field. So some people are doing sculpture, other people are doing filmmaking, other people are writing poetry. It's all sorts of things. <clears throat> so for me, it's, it's, it's empowering because it's a disability-led organisation that really gives people the confidence to be who we are. And it's also a network of disabled artists. And I think that's really, really important because it can be so isolating trying to do this sort of work on your own. Shape, like Cara, champions engagement with the arts. I was in Paris a few years ago and I went to see the Mona Lisa in the Louvre and um, I, I found myself at the back of a crowd and um, as I waited for the crowd to part so I could look at the painting I began to watch what the crowd were doing and there were a lot of people who were clearly very pleased to be there and they travelled a long way to be there and you know tourists who were being videoed um, there they were in front of the Mona Lisa and they were wavering at all the folks back home but nobody was actually looking at the picture and I, I watched and I counted and the average length of time that anyone spent looking at the painting was seven seconds having you know people traveled thousands of miles to be there um, and that said a lot to me about how people don't actually engage with art um, and what I'm trying to do as an artist is draw people into my experience so you can feel what it's like to live inside a dyslexic life. Um, and I, I want people to engage with me for more than seven seconds. <laughs>